So it's time for our next six millimeter arc video. Hopefully you didn't miss the last one. We got our new upper broken in and tested, shot some pretty good groups, pretty successful with our first hand loads. So we're gonna keep rolling from there. A uh, couple things, you might notice my barrel sitting here. I've got my upper torn apart and we're gonna look at a couple things and it all boils down to, I've had problems measuring my maximum overall length with the various bullets we're testing. Now the Hornady modified case, yeah, for their overall length gauge, wasn't available then and I, I don't know if it's available now. I don't think it is. So a generous viewer named Craig made these for me. I sent him two pieces of fired brass and he made me some modified cases. So we're gonna play around with that and that'll probably be like the, the first part of our video here. So a couple other things we've picked up. I got a hundred pieces of new brass. We're not gonna shoot this stuff yet. We're gonna keep it for later because we've still got our brass we recovered from shooting the, the factory ammo. So we're gonna keep on shooting that, wear it out. We're gonna see how many firings we can get, see if the primer pockets hold up, that sort of stuff. So new brass, that's later. I did finally get my set of Hornady dies. So in the last video, we used the RCBS AR series small base dies and they did fine. Like, you know, I was pretty happy with those. Nothing to complain about, but this set of Hornady custom grade dies are what we're gonna to use today. Not much to it, a basic full length resizing die and a basic seating die. Now to go along with this set, I bought a Hornady micro just uh, seating micrometer. It's just a little thing that screws on the top and turns that die into a micro adjustable seating die. And I also went ahead and picked up the seating stems that are available. You can see we've got one for the 110 grain A tip and then another one for the 108 grain ELD match and A max. Now, one thing that annoys me a little bit, as far as I know, maybe it's somewhere on their website, but Hornady doesn't tell you which seating stem is coming in a given set of dies. If that's available, you guys let me know, please, down in the comments, because it drives me bonkers. Luckily, they have started marking the seating stems with the part number. You can see some numbers there. And the one that came in this die set is the 397103. It's a 7103. And one of these stems I bought, the 108 grain ELD match stem, guess what it is? 397103. So I didn't need to buy this. But what kind of sucks about this now is both of the stems I have are for big, heavy VLD style bullets and that ogive shape. So I'm worried a little bit, like whenever we start playing with lighter bullets, like here's a box of bullets I bought to try out. It's the 87 grain uh, VMAX. And we'll be going, you know, even lighter than that down to, what is it, the 58 grainer and everything in between. So I have to think there are additional uh, Hornady stems for six millimeter, kind of a standard traditional ogive shape, lighter bullet sort of stem. You know what I mean? And I don't have that one. All I have are the ones for the heavy bullets. So that might be something that's gonna cause us issues as we go forward, I don't know. We're not gonna worry about that too much today because we're not gonna shoot the 87 grain VMAX today. What we'll probably do is continue to shoot the 108 grain ELD match, which shot our best group in the last video. So we'll load up some more of those and also wanna try out some of these Sierra bullets. These two boxes are the same thing. This is the 90 grain tipped game king, the game changers. These were one of our best performers whenever we were testing the six millimeter WOA cartridge. And I'm hoping they're gonna shoot well in the arc as well. With a 90 grain bullet, we should be able to, you know, get those velocities up and get these hunting bullets expanding well. So we'll see where it takes us. You know, we're going to test the 90 grain. Well, I guess I should also show you the other bullet. This is the 100 grain game changer. So a little bit heavier but we're gonna test the 90s and the 100s. We're gonna try and get them shooting well. We're gonna try and get them up as high velocity as we can and you know maintain our good accuracy. And then we'll be doing some gel testing eventually with one of those two bullets or it, you know, it could all, we also have the 103 grain ELDX. So it's, you know, it's a, it's a contender as well, but that, that's the plan is to kind of go on a little bit of a, a search for a hunting bullet, a deer bullet, I guess I should say. So we're gonna get started with that a little bit today. We'll probably shoot just a couple of the 90s and a couple of the 100s 
and just kind of see what happens. But before we get to any of that reloading stuff, let's go up close here and I'll try and show you the problems I've been having measuring maximum overall length and we'll dive into that a little bit. So the way I normally measure overall length, maximum overall length in a gun is I take a piece of brass, like lightly resize it, don't bump the shoulder too much, and then I'll take a Dremel tool and cut a slit down the neck. And then we can, you know, slip a bullet in there and then carefully put it in the gun, let the rifling seat the bullet, and then carefully remove it and then take our measurements. With this gun, I could not get consistent readings using that method. And that's the first time I've run into that. So that's why I sent off these two fired pieces of brass to Craig. He modified them for the Hornady overall length gauge. Let's go ahead and screw one of these guys on there. And I think I've come up with a reason why this might be causing difficulties. Because once I got this back, I was playing around with it and, you know, sliding it up in there. And the first time I did, I couldn't get the, uh, well, actually right there. Did you see how hard that went in there? I'm gonna have to, Okay, so this is me from the future, and I'm gonna be chopping out a portion of this video because I ran into more problems and basically just chased my tail for a couple hours, and I don't wanna put you guys through 30 minutes of video where nothing is accomplished. So the, the two modified, or the two cases I sent off to Craig that he drilled and tapped for me, I sent him just plain old fired brass. I hadn't done anything to him. I thought that would be right. I don't have a ton of experience with the, the Hornady modified case. At one point in the past, I did try and make, uh, modify some cases on my own with the, bought the right drill bit and tap and stuff and could never get it to work right for me, just trying to do it by hand in a vise. So I just didn't know any better. So I, I sent him plain fired brass and maybe in a lot of cartridges that would be fine. But with this one, you just saw that going into the chamber very, very difficult. Well, right around the base of the case, it was rubbing on the chamber. So definitely don't want that. We want this to go in nice and smooth and we want the shoulder to be the primary point of contact. So what I ended up having to do, because I had two cases that were modified, but they wouldn't fit easily in my chamber. I ended up taking one of them and running it through the full length sizing die. I was really worried about the case collapsing or something like that, but didn't have any problems. Just lubed up the case really good, ran it through the sizing die. I made sure I didn't bump the shoulder, you know, so our, so our base to shoulder measurement should still be the same, which is what's critical for the measurements we're trying to take with the overall length gauge. Now, the next problem that caused was after it went through the sizing die, now the, the neck was sized down. So I used a, a six millimeter expanding mandrel, a 243 expanding mandrel to open that neck back up. The problem is this mandrel that's meant for neck turning you know, expanding before neck turning is not quite big enough for the bullet to then uh, slide freely in and out of the case. So I ended up just having to take a bullet and kind of uh, rotate it around to open up the neck. Didn't really have any other option that I could think of to get the neck large enough for a bullet to go in and out of. But I eventually got it good enough. I might eventually just go ahead and pick up a mandrel so I can, you know, get it opened up a little bit more uniformly. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. But Ended up getting it working, and that's where I want to resume the testing that I had initially filmed. I also spent some time trying to figure out why the split case method that has worked pretty darn well for me in other cartridges just doesn't seem to be working well in this cartridge. I didn't make a whole lot of progress there either. I even ended up using a Cero Safe to make a casting of my chamber, if you've never seen this stuff. Yeah, here's a, here's a fresh bar of it. This is a chamber casting alloy. It's a very low melting uh, point alloy that you can like melt with a hair dryer or something like that. And you can make, you know, a casting of your chamber that ends up coming out looking something more or less like this. And what I suspected was that the neck of my chamber might be particularly tight. And with the split case where we put a bullet in there and the brass spreads out a little bit, like maybe I was getting some interference with my neck. That's the best guess I've got right now because after measuring it, there is only about five or six thousandths of excess space there. If I did the math right, it comes out to about that. So since I didn't really come up with any answers and didn't really do any tests that led me to learn anything, we'll just, that'll just continue to be a mystery and we'll move on with our life. So let's go ahead and jump back to the previously recorded footage and we'll rejoin things right after I got done 
sizing my modified case, and we'll go from there. You'd think it would definitely slide in a little bit easier now. Yeah, that's much different. So this just comes down to my stupidity and inexperience. I should have resized the brass before I sent it to him to be modified. And I just didn't know any better. I figured you wanted it fire formed, but that plan didn't work out so well. All right, got a fresh bullet out of the box. This is a 108 ELD. I don't even remember what that last bullet we were messing with was. It was either a 108 ELD or a 103 ELDX. Okay, let's see if we can get the bullet in there. Yep, there it is. Took a little bit of force, but it's in there. Let's see if we can actually push it out now with this dinky little plastic rod. Yep, it takes a little bit of, a little bit of force, but it's good enough. All right, let's try this again. Case all the way in there, pushing forward. A couple little taps with the plastic rod to make sure it's all the way in there and tighten it down. Okay, that's better. That's what I expected. You know, I expected most of the time for the bullet to get stuck in the barrel. Got a cleaning rod here that I can use to give it a little pop. There it goes. Put it back in there. That looks, that looks a whole lot better. <laughs> okay, so I'm getting 1.732, which is a much more reasonable number, I think. Go back and see what we shot last time. Yeah, we shot 1.702 last time. So we're definitely in the ballpark. Now we just gotta see if we can get repeatable results. All right, just a touch shorter that time, 1.730. Ah, this next reading is exactly the same as the last one. 1.730, and the next one's extremely close, 1.731. Holy crap, I think we got this licked, maybe. Maybe. Then again, maybe not. So what I'm gonna do now is turn off the camera. I'm gonna take a few more measurements with the 108 ELD, and I'm gonna take some numbers with the 90 and 100 grain Sierra Game Changers, and then we'll be ready to start talking about load data. If I run into more problems, for crying out loud, I'll turn the camera back on and let you know, but hopefully we've got it now. Okay, so I finished up my measurements and I got readings with all three bullets that I'm happy with, right? I, I got pretty consistent numbers and I'm feeling pretty good about things. As you can see, our upper is put back together, so it's ready for the range. These are the numbers I ended up coming up with. 1.730 for the 108 ELD, 1.745 for the 100 grain game changer, and 1.742 for the 90 grainer. We're gonna test that a little bit more. Whenever we get to bullet seating, I wanna seat some of these at about those lengths and see if they actually fit in the gun or, or maybe a, a couple thousand shorter and see if they fit. I don't know, we'll see. I guess the lessons I learned here would be to, you know, resize your brass before you modify it to make sure that body of the case is gonna be able to slide in that chamber easily. But I would warn not to mess up that, the headspace measurement, right? Or the, you know, whatever you wanna call it, the cartridge base to the, to the shoulder. You know, don't bump the shoulder whenever you're sizing it, but maybe get pretty darn close, size the body, and you're in good shape. And the reason why you don't wanna bump the shoulder a bunch, if it's not already obvious, like, you know, if we reduce the distance from the base to the shoulder, that's going to directly affect our measurement because the brass is going to go farther into the chamber. And then when you pull it out and take your measurement, it's gonna be off by that much. Hopefully that makes sense. The other thing I need to do, I, I really need a little bit bigger expander to open up the neck of that case so that bullets will go in and out freely. But it was it was frustrating that the bullets wouldn't slide freely in and out because it made uh, using the plunger a bit of a pain in the butt. So, anything else to talk about on this godforsaken subject? I don't think so. It probably would have been faster and much easier to just slowly seat some bullets deeper and deeper and try them in the gun and kind of, you know, just determine it that way than going through all of the nonsense we've just been through, but whatever. All right, let's get moving. It's time to talk about the loads I wanna shoot today. And the first one is the same combination we shot in the last video, the 108 grain Hornady ELD match, and we're gonna shoot it with Hodgson CFE 223. This was our best group in the last video. 28.8 grains of CFE 223 gave us uh, 2,550 feet per second out of my 18 inch barrel. The group was great, 0.35 inches. The velocity statistics were amazing. We had a 2.5 standard deviation and an extreme spread of six feet per second. 
So the first load is I want to reload that exact combination and exact charge weight and try to duplicate those results. So with CFE 223, we're going to start at 28.8 grains. And then I want to work my way up from there in three tenths of a grain increments. Now the load data that Hornady has released shows a max charge of 29.1 on their gas gun data. They've also released data for bolt action rifles and it shows a max of 30.6. So that's 1.5 grains higher. We talked about it in the last video, right? About the 52,000 PSI SAMI spec for this cartridge and, and the possible problems you can run into if you exceed pressure. The biggest one being the bolt. I'm gonna ignore all of that because it's more fun. I'm gonna go ahead and exceed the gas gun maximum and go up into the uh, bolt action territory of the data. So we'll shoot five, five groups with this combination and we'll go all the way up to 30.0 grains. That's still 0.6 grains below the maximum they show for the bolt action rifles. And we'll just keep an eye on things. Maybe our brass will start getting beat up. Maybe our bolt will shear a lug. Maybe I'll blow my face off. I don't know. That's why we're here. That's the fun part. If we knew what would happen, this would be pretty boring. The next powder I want to shoot is IMR 8208 XBR. And we're going to shoot it with both the 90 and 100 grain Sierra Game Changers. So I don't have data for, you know, specifically for these bullets. As far as I know, Sierra hasn't uh, put out any load data for six millimeter arc. So I looked uh, through the numbers we've got from Hornady for the Hornady bullets, and these were the best guesses I could come up with. The 90 grain bullet will shoot 25.5 and 26.0 grains, just two groups, see what happens. And with the 100 grain, we'll shoot 25.0 and 25.5. With the 108 ELD match, we're gonna stick with the same overall length we shot in the last video, which the cartridge-based O-Jive measurement was 1.702, and it came out to about a 2.253 inch overall length in that ballpark. So with the numbers, I measured for our max overall length with that bullet, it should be, that's about 28 thousandths of jump to the rifling. Not that that really matters, but just, you know, keeping track of it. Now with the two Sierra bullets, I wanna shoot a 1.725 inch cartridge based ogive. That should give us an overall length of about 2.290 and be a little bit over 20 thousandths off the lands. To be honest, I wasn't really paying that close attention to total, total overall length. So here on the screen, I'm showing you an overall length, hopefully. And that's what I measured once we got to bullet seating. So what you're seeing on the screen should be correct. For primers, I want to use the Federal GM205M. These guys right there, that's what we used in the last video. And they seem to work okay. And the last thing is brass. This is Hornady brass. It is twice fired, once as factory ammo and then once in our last video. So this will be the third firing on this brass. You might or might not be able to see, I did anneal these went ahead and yeah, went ahead and annealed them. And they've also been, you know, tumbled, cleaned, removed the primers, that sort of stuff. So they're ready for resizing. I do use the salt bath annealing method. And if you're curious about that, I've got a video on that setup and how I anneal my brass. I knew I was going to be spending a bunch of time goofing off with this stupid thing. So I skipped over showing the annealing in this video. So is that it? Have we talked about everything? I think we have. We're actually ready to start loading. One thing I forgot to mention, in the last video we only shot 40 shots, but in this video I'm going to be shooting 45, so I'm going to have five pieces of, of uh, once fired brass in this operation as well, so that's a little bit of a bummer. I'll make it the last group, so our yeah, the last group we shoot will be once fired brass that has not been annealed. It is what it is, right? Shouldn't be a big deal. So I'm going to use some Hornady one shot lube. In the last video, somebody told me I should remove the, eh, the little nozzle hose thingy. Let's give this a shot. Yeah, that's not bad. Don't really want a super narrow stream of lube anyway, do I? Okay, the other thing I want to do, I'm running low on factory ammo. So I need some ciders and stuff like that. So the other 32 pieces of once fired brass I've got, I'm going to go ahead and load them up. I actually might load up the, the same load as our, our first CFE 223 group with 28.8 grains. That's exactly what I'll do. 
Okay, so the other thing I want to do while those dry is tear apart my new Hornady dies and wipe out the factory oil and junk, and then I'm going to shoot a little one shot on them as well. See if I can get the get the decapping rod out of this guy. Oh yeah, Hornady dies usually aren't too oily, but man, RCBS really oils them up heavily. And I guess we could go ahead and get our micro just seating micrometer out of the package. To install these, all you gotta do is remove this guy, which comes with the standard die, and replace it with this. Not much to it. And then you've got a nice adjustment on your die. And I found these to be very accurate. If you need to move 10 thousandths, you dial up you know, 10 thousandths and you're right on the money. So it's a really nice upgrade for these for these Hornady dies, a little, little, little shot down in there, and we're ready to go. The one shot dries pretty quick and it doesn't leave them too greasy. So let's go ahead and get over to the press. So you might notice I've switched over to the, the Lee Breech Lock Challenger press. I've been using the Hornady Lock and Load Classic for a little, little while, but I was getting super frustrated with the lock and load bushing system. So here we are. now. You know, the Lee has a very similar sort of bushing system. There it is. There's our bushing. And you'll notice that the bushing has got a little notch right there. And on the press, you'll see this plunger up here on the top. Well, when the Lee bushing goes in, you push down the plunger and turn it, and it locks into place. So your bushing's not going to spin on you like the Hornady lock and load does. So hopefully this will be a little bit less frustrating. In the last video with the RCBS sizing die, we tested to see how much shoulder bump we got with the die all the way down. And with the RCBS die, it bumped our shoulder about seven thousandths. So I want to do the same thing here with the Hornady die. Here we go, that's about it right there. Our shell holder is making solid contact with the bottom of the die. So we'll start out with the, with the brass I'm gonna use for ciders while we mess around with the die. Let's see how much shoulder bump we get, which I guess we should measure it beforehand. The number I had written down from the last video was 1.191, and that is exactly what we've got again today. So let's go ahead and size this guy all the way up in there and then down. I did it again. I forgot to tighten up my stupid uh, <laughs> uh. Oh, that makes a god awful noise. It's designed to do that. I think they call it the uh, zip. Not not so much in this situation, but in a situation where your decapping pin hits something solid, the whole thing's supposed to be able to like, uh, I don't know, slide upward instead of breaking your decapping pin. I think that's the, the idea. All right, let's see if we can get it out now. There it is. That's good. Now we need to reset the depth. Yep, that's pretty close. Okay, hopefully that's tight enough. Let's see what it did to that piece of brass. Looks like it's come out to 1.186, which is five thousandths of shoulder bump. Now this is not really a fair test because this press is not as powerful as the Hornady, and the Hornady is also a very heavy cam over, which at the very end of the stroke, the mechanism cams over and the ram actually drops just a touch at that last little second. This press does not do that. It's upward movement all the way. So that, that might affect this a little. And at the top of the stroke on this one, like you can actually feel when the shoulder hits the die, like that last little bit of the stroke is like, you can feel that shoulder bumping. So all the way up in there and then that last little bit is pretty hard. Now, this press has the power. It doesn't take a ton of effort but you just need to make sure that you get the, the handle all the way down to that tough part in the bottom of the stroke 
and apply consistent pressure because just here with the first uh, couple pieces I ran through the die in this setting I'm getting a little bit of variation from case to case and that shouldn't happen these should come out of the resizing die with consistent headspace uh, numbers this is about what I'm seeing 1.182 which is just a couple thousandths shorter than we saw with the RCBS die it was 1.184 this is still too much bump right we've bumped the shoulder too much our fired pieces are at 1.191 so let's see if we can dial this die back a little bit and get them to come out to maybe 1.189 or 1.188 so two or three thousandths of bump there we go backed it out maybe a sixteenth of a turn something like that so let's see what we get here down to the shoulder I can feel it and then a eh, little bit farther and then out nope that didn't really make much difference still like 1.182 back it out a little bit more I bet that's going to be pretty close because I felt that shoulder right at the end of the stroke doesn't feel like we moved it very much definitely better 1.186 so I'm going to go just a little bit farther and try again 1.187 a little bit more this ought to do it I bet I think it will there we go that works for me 1.188 right about three thousandths of shoulder bump let's try another one here that one went a little bit farther 1.187 yeah the next one's 1.187 as well I'm gonna call that good enough and eh, no I'm not I'm gonna back it out we might as well get it right you know it's a pain in the butt but we might as well deal with it all right that one's back to 1.188 we'll call that good now one thing I've got to be careful with so the brass I just used to set this die is our once fired factory brass that has not been annealed so our brass that has been annealed is going to have a softer shoulder and that can jack with this this is not going to spring back the same way those other pieces are so let's uh, let's run a couple of these through and see what sort of numbers we get hopefully they're close it's close but it's a little bit longer getting 1.190 which is two thousandths longer than our other brass tell you what let's let's run two more pieces through and see if that's consistent yep that's the same 1.190 yeah last one's exactly the same so what I'm going to have to do is go ahead and resize all of our pieces that have not been annealed then I'm going to need to tweak the die down just a little bit and size the stuff that has been annealed that's a little bit annoying but that's okay but that yeah that 1.190 measurement kind of scares me that's only one thousandths of shoulder bump and really don't want to run into feeding issues in today's video so we'll take the time to tweak the die might as well so I went a little bit overboard with the lube on these guys so I went ahead and hit them with a rag with a little bit of isopropyl alcohol on them and now I'm checking the length on these to see if we're going to need to trim we are definitely not going to need to trim the batch we fired in the last video they're all right around 1480 1478 our max brass length is 1.490 so these th this is what we trimmed them to in the last video these didn't stretch at all during this resizing operation like not at all so that's good news I'm not going to waste my time measuring them they're all coming out exactly the same now the once fired brass is probably going to be a different story and in the, in the last video I only had a couple that were really over the max length but I went ahead and trimmed them all I'm feeling lazy today so I really don't want to trim these but I'm going to go ahead and measure them all just in case yep there's the first one that's right at max length just about there all right this guy right here is our longest piece and it is one thousandth of an inch over maximum I'm not gonna worry about it I'm not in the mood to trim right now we'll get them next time 
So really the, the last thing I need to do before we start putting in our primers is quick deburr and chamfer of the case mouths. Just a little twist on the inside and a twist on the outside. Now normally whenever you do that, you wouldn't want your case straight up and down, right? All of our brass shavings just fell down into this guy and I'm gonna have to tap it on my bench to get them out. So that was just for the camera. Normally, you want to have them tilted down towards your bench or towards the floor so you don't have to worry about that. Now at the end of the last video, we already checked the primer pockets in this brass and they're still nice and tight. I'm really hoping our primer pocket life with this cartridge is going to be good and so far so good after two firings. All right, so I set up my powder measure to spit out 28.8 grains of CFE-223. So that's what I did for the, for the cider ammo that I'm loading. But for our test loads, I'm gonna be hand weighing each one. And I need my trickler. There it is. All right, these first five should be pretty easy since my powder measure is set for 28.8. Should get us pretty close. Yep, 28.7. There we are. Okay, so it is bullet seating time. Pull out the sizing die and install our seating die. So what we do is we take a case, put it in there and run it all the way up. Then we take the die and screw it down until we feel it touch. There it is right there. Then you back it off at least one full turn. And there we are. So what I usually do is go one full turn and then keep going until I can read the scale easily, which you may or may not be able to see, whatever. But the scale's right there. So to start out, I want to mess around with the, the ciders I'm loading. And I want to test out those maximum overall lengths that we determined earlier in the video. And I need my bullet comparator. Okay, so according to the measurements, we should hit the lands at 1.730. So let's start getting this guy dialed in. I've got the adjustment backed all the way out. So should be able to go up into the die with our case. Yep, definitely not touching anything. Ooh, you know what we forgot to do is to double check our seating stem. So I'm going to pull off the adjuster and I'm gonna use a big long Big long Allen wrench to poke the seating stem out the top. There it is. Now, this seating stem is specifically designed for this exact bullet. So if we don't have an excellent fit, I won't be sure what to think. All right, focus, there it is. All right, bullet down in there. Oh, feels good, feels really good. Yeah, fits like a glove. So the question is, how does this fit our Sierra bullets? This is the 90 grainer. And both the 90 and the 100 grainers have the same exact ogive. The, the only difference between the bullets is that the 100 is a little bit longer. So if it fits one, it should fit both. Yeah, that is less perfect. Yep, yeah, got some wobbliness there. So let me grab the only other seating stem we've got. Hopefully it's a good fit. Like if we end up having to use the uh, that one there. It's not the worst fit in the world. Like, I think we'll probably be okay. Okay, so this one is for the 110 grain A-tip. Give it a shot. Oh yeah, that's much better. That's actually really nice. Here's a 100 grainer. Yep, same way. Yeah, that feels really good. Feels really good. That is excellent news. So we'll start off with 108 grain bullets and we'll finish those up. And then I'll switch stems for the, for the Sierras. So, all right, back to where we were to run this 108 up into here. We should be able to screw this down until we feel something touch. There it is right there. So seating stem came into contact with our bullet ogive. And let's go down uh, a little over a hundred thousandths. So let's go ahead and seat that a little bit and take a measurement. 
Right now we're at 1.925. So we need to go down 195 thousandths. So there's 50, 100, 150, 195. All right, so that should be pretty close to 1.730. I'm not sure if I, did I mess up my math? I'm five thousandths too long, but that's pretty close for an adjustment that big. So here's what I wanna do. So we hit the lands at 1.730. I don't wanna seat it there. I wanna make it a little bit shorter. So let's go to 1.725 and then we'll see if that fits in the gun. So that should be down 10 more thousandths. There it is. Let's seat that and see what we get. And we're right on the number, 1.725. Total overall length is at 2.274, which is a couple thousandths longer than I expected for that for that cartridge-based ogive measurement, but whatever, doesn't matter. A couple thousandths here and there won't hurt anything. All right, here's my upper. I'm not gonna like slam this guy in or, or you know feed it off a magazine or anything like that yet. I'm just kind of babying it in there. And hopefully this will slide in and go. Nice. And comes right back out. No problem whatsoever. Okay. That's good. Now, if I back out 10 thousandths. So let's go oop, need to tighten down my seating stem adjuster thingy. All right, there we go. So there's 10 thousandths out. Now, if we seat one at this setting, it should be five thousandths into the lands. So I would expect it to not fit. So let's try that. And it goes right in. Oh, God. <laughs> Actually, it is kind of hanging up just a little bit but not nearly as bad as I expected. Tell you what, let's go out five more thousandths and seat another one. And let me double check myself here. Yep, we're about 10 thousandths longer than the measure, measurement I had taken earlier. And it went in. can feel like I can feel some resistance. I, I guess it's just, you know, the difference between pushing on the bullet with this guy with the little plastic rod, even though I was pushing pretty hard, it still doesn't compare to the mechanical advantage of the bolt, maybe. Well, by God, we're going to keep backing out until we can't fit it in there by hand. All right, here's the next one. Five more thousandths longer. All right, that one was really tough to get in there. Well, I, not really tough, but pretty tough. Oh, come on. Come on. All right, so I got it out of there without resorting to any tools or heavy objects. So that shows 1.747. 1.730 was the number I had written down earlier that I had, that I thought was the spot where we'd touch the lands. So, I mean, I guess we're off by 10 to 15 thousandths with this guy. Yeah, but like I mentioned, I think it probably comes down to just the difference between the force applied by the bolt going home versus this little guy. I'm not sure. Well, let's swap seeding stems and we'll see if we get similar results with the Sierra bullets. Now I want to be careful and not screw anything up here because these are our actual test rounds. Okay, up into the die, screw it down until we feel a touch, go down a little bit more and get our first reading. Okay, so this first one is the 90 grain and 1.742 is the number I had written down. So we're at 1.810, so that's 68. Okay, let's go down 68. 
and we'll seat that. So I'm one and a half thousandths long. So 1.742 is what I had written down. Let's check this. I presume it's going to go right in. All right, here it goes. Ugh, maybe not. That went in pretty tough. Okay, came out. So we're not like marking up the bullet really bad. Sometimes you'll see that. Let's go down just a couple thousandths. We'll go down like four thousandths. And seat the next one. Here it goes. Snaps right in. So I think with that one, our number was pretty darn close. Very close. All right, here's a hundred grainer. And let's back out just a little bit. Like I, like I said, I think the O-Jive is the same. So we could probably seat it and get pretty much the same number. But just to be safe, let's back out about, uh, that's like 22 thousandths or something. And go ahead and seat this guy. The number I had written down was a couple thousandths longer, 1.745. Yeah, we're at 1.764. So let's go down, let's go down 15. So that should be, I think about, so that's five thousandths into the lands if my measurement from earlier is right. Yep. Okay, let's see. All right, it went in pretty darn tough. Come out of there. Okay, it came out. So if I go down five, that should be like right at the lands. And then let's go like, I don't know, just a couple thousands, two, two more thousands than that. And see how that one chambers it is. All right, here we go. Snapped right in. Okay. So it looks like with the Sierras, I came up with the right number. And with the Hornadies, I was off about 10 or 12 thousandths or something. So while I've got this seating stem in here, I'm gonna go ahead and seat these 20 Sierra bullets. So right now we're at 1.743. Our goal is 1.725. So we need to go down about 18, which should be right about there. Let's see what that gets us. Looking good, 1.725. Let's take a total overall length. The first one I'm getting 2.293. Now the magazines I use will fit this, no problem. I can go, you know, to 2.3 or just a little bit farther. So this is pretty much full magazine length. Double check our second one. Yep, 1.725 cartridge based to ogive. Total overall length, 2.293. What was that last one? I already forgot it. I need to write this down. Yep, so the next one, total overall length, 2.294. Cartridge-based ogive is exactly the same as the previous ones, 1.725. Good, so it's in that 2.293, 2.294 sort of ballpark. So I moved on to the 90 grain and dialed in our cartridge-based ogive number. Our total overall length is a little bit longer with these, just a couple thousands. So there's a 2.295 and a there's a 2.297. So I think that's that pretty much covers it. I'm just going to Finish these, swap our seating stem, dial in the overall length for the Hornadies, and that'll be it. And I think we've covered all that more than enough. I'm gonna be on the range with these tomorrow, and it's supposed to be raining most of the day, I guess. I've got a canopy I'm gonna put over my shooting bench hopefully keep us dry. That is one good thing about the, the shot marker system is it's all weatherproof and I don't have to worry about a camera getting wet down range or that sort of stuff. So I have to wait for tomorrow, but for you, it's right now. So let's get out to the range. Okay, so I'm gonna start out with a few ciders to make sure we're still sighted in. We did have the gun completely apart, the barrel out, all of that stuff. So it'll be interesting to see if it's still zeroed properly once we got it all back together. The target is at 100 yards. I am using the shot marker electronic target system. So we'll have real-time feedback on our groups. The gun has got an 18 inch Odenworks barrel. And yeah, that's enough. 
we're getting velocity with our lab radar. It's uh, fired up and armed. So let's go ahead and shoot a couple here and see if we're still zeroed. Nice, that's pretty close. Huh, looks like I've got a little technical difficulties going on here with the shot marker. Bottom left sensor. Well, let's shoot one more and then I'll run down there and hopefully fix it. Yep, I got the same sensor warning on that shot. So let me run down and see if I can get it straightened out. Okay, so I went down there and the cable was connected, but I don't know. I removed them and put them back in a couple times, maybe clean up the contacts a little bit. If it's still not working, I'll go in and get a, a different audio cable. They use uh, audio cables to connect the sensors. Whatever, let's see what happens. Hey, I didn't get an error that time. Good. It says all sensors are okay now. Let's go ahead and shoot the last two. Bags are getting settled in, which is a good thing. Tweak my rest a little bit. Oh, baby. I'll take that for ciders that were powder charges measured, you know, with a powder measure. That is really good. So we had our cold bore shot. Eh, why is it saying that the stupid sensor... Okay, yep, last three shots were good. But it's funny that even with that one sensor not working, th this is exactly the way it looks down at the target. So it was still able to uh, show the shots correctly. So that's good. So those, those are 0.68 inches. Let's hide number one just for the heck of it. Oh, yeah. The next four went into 0.24 inches. I like this start. Check the, check the velocity statistics. Velocity 25.25. Last video it was 25.50. Standard deviation of 7.3. Extreme spread of 17. Still pretty good. Was looking to see if the, the first shot's velocity was maybe out and it wasn't. It was right in the group with all of the others. Cool. Yeah, this is some pretty good stuff. I tell you what, let's go ahead and shoot five more. Just uh, get the gun nice and warmed up. And we'll see what a 10 shot group looks like. Holy crap, that is good stuff. All right, I think we're warmed up. I think, uh, yeah, <laughs> I think we're good. Let's let the barrel cool down for a few minutes and then we'll get on to shooting, shooting the real stuff. Okay, so it's time to move on to the real stuff. Our first load is the exact same load we just shot with the ciders. This is 28.8 grains of CFE 223 with 108 grain ELD match. The only difference between these and the ciders we just shot are these were, you know, hand weighed. Each one was verified where the others were thrown. So let's see what happens. My hopes are very high. Well, crap, that fourth shot kind of opus, opened us up a little bit, didn't it? Still not too bad. I can live with that. So that was a 0.83 inch group. Get our velocity. Average velocity, 25.58. Standard deviation of 8.1. Extreme spread of 17. And I'll tell you what else I'm going to do. I'm going to start recording the standard deviation the average velocity and standard deviation we get from shot marker because a lot of times well like in this case you'll, you'll see the numbers are pretty close like you know at the muzzle here with the lab radar we got 8.1 and then at the target we had 6.2 but then every once in a while they'll be wildly different so i just kind of want to 
start tracking that, trying to maybe figure out whether that shot marker target velocity and SD is useful to us, you know, something we can maybe make use of in the future. So the last video with that load, the average velocity was 2550, exactly. So 2558, pretty darn close. So the ciders that we shot that were a little bit lower, 2532, I mean, clearly just my, my powder measure was throwing just a touch light maybe. No big deal. Okay, next up is 29.1 grains. Still CFE 223. Still the 108 grain ELD match. Let's see if we can get some better velocity and hold on to this accuracy. All right, that wasn't too bad. Is that 0.8 inches? So 0 0.80. Let's see what our velocities looked like. Average is 25.82 with a 9.6 standard deviation, extreme spread of 21. Target velocity was 23.84 with a 9.0 down there. Okay, yeah, you know, that's not bad. I can live with that. Okay, moving right along. Next up is 29.4 grains of CFE-223 with the 108 grain ELD. So we're getting beyond that, their maximum load for gas guns. So gonna have to, gonna have to start watching the brass pretty close, make sure we don't get ourselves into trouble. Hopefully this accuracy holds together. That was a weird, weird, weird group. Kind of double grouping on us there, wasn't it? Still not terrible, 0.92 inches. Huh, very strange. I was keeping an eye on our velocities as I was shooting. Looked like most of them were just over 2,600, which was, you know, about what we were expecting here. Yep, the average was 2,612. Standard deviation of 10.9, extreme spread of 27. And target velocity was exactly 200 feet per second less, 24.12, and 11.3 down there. Good. Let me chase down that brass, make sure we didn't tear it up. All right, everything seems okay so far. A couple little shiny spots here and there, the, you know, the type where we get back to the bench and we won't be able to find what I was talking about. But still have nice rounded primers. Nothing scary looking. That's good. Okay, next up is 29.7 grains with CFE 223 and the 108 ELD. I was just talking with some folks on Twitch, watching this live that with that weird double group from the last group, it'll be interesting to see if this group kind of picks one or the one of the two and maybe starts grouping again, either high or low. I don't know, only one way to find out. Okay, hmm, well, still not terrible. 0 0.90 inches, average velocity 2643, standard deviation 9.2, extreme spread 22. Man, these velocity numbers, all of our standard deviations today have been between 8.1 and 10.9, so right around 10-ish. Pretty consistent performance from CFE223, which is weird. Huh, let's see, 
what the brass looks like. It's not too bad. So, you know, more shiny spots like last time, but no burrs or anything being raised up. Nothing serious that I can see. Looks about the same as the last load. I can live with that. I mean, so, you know, these, these groups certainly aren't bad. Everything's been under an inch so far, but I can't help but wonder if that, well, you know, back to the last video, we were shooting this same combination, CFE 223 with this bullet, and the groups were kind of crappy, 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 and then once we got to 28.8 grains, we shot our best group of the day. So it looks like maybe that 28.8 to 29.1 range is going to be a good place to hang out in, maybe. I don't know. We'll see. Maybe this next group will be the best of this day. Okay, so we've got one more group to go with the 108 grain Hornady ELD match. 30.0 grains with CFE 223. Let's see what happens. All right, that tightened back up a little bit. 0.58 inches. I'll take that. That's our best group of the day so far by a country mile. Average velocity, 26.79. <laughs> standard deviation, 5.2. Best standard deviation so far. Same thing with extreme spread, 13 feet per second. 24, 33 at the target and 6.2 at the target. Nice. But now, very important question. What's our brass look like? Brass looks exactly the same as the last two groups. A couple of shiny spots on each one at the ejector. And a couple little lines over on the extractor side as well. But nothing crazy. Like no burrs being raised up or anything ridiculous. No flattening of primers, any of that garbage. Good. We'll give the barrel just a minute. It's not too hot. Weather's really good today. I think it's probably 65 degrees, something like that. Taking our time, making every shot count, making sure our barrel stays nice and cool. So it's all good. But we'll give it a minute anyway before we move on to the, to the game changer. All right, it's time to move on to the 90 grain Sierra game changer. It's the first time we've shot this bullet, so I'm not really sure what we're going to get. Our first load is 25.5 grains of 8208 XBR. This is also our first shots with 8208 XBR, so not really sure what we're going to get for velocity. It's not going to be quite as good as like the CFE 223 we've been testing, that sort of stuff. So we may be a little bit low on velocity, but the main thing here is let's, you know, let's see if these things will group. So let's go ahead and do that. 25.5 grains of 8208 XBR. All right, that's a pretty good start. Well, that was a really soft shooter, like uh, just feeling the way the action was running and all that stuff. It was shooting a whole lot smoother than our hotter loads with CFE 223. Velocity was pretty darn low, but that's okay. We were expecting that, right? We were prepared for that. So 0.64 inch group. Average velocity 25.24. So we got an 18 grain lighter bullet and we're basically shooting the same velocities we were shooting with, uh, yeah, with the 108. So pretty weak. Standard deviation 9.9, .9, extreme spread 26. Down at the target, it was 23.11 and 6.6. .6. Let's track down the brass. Okay, no surprise that those velocity levels, brass looks great. Nothing to worry about at all. Okay, our next group, we're staying with the 90 grain tipped game king. And we're staying with 8208 XBR. We're bumping up a half a grain to a 
see how much of a velocity bump we get. Kind of fighting my bags. Need to stop doing that. Don't fight them. Adjust them. Good deal. 0.63 inches. Well, talk about consistency. Our last group was 0.64. Average velocity, 2568. Standard deviation, 5.4. Extreme spread, 13. Good deal. I tell you what, I'm pretty happy with that as a first outing with the 90 grain Sierra Game Changer. And then if you remember, this is the bullet that the uh, six millimeter WOA really shot well. So I'm already kind of predisposed to like to like this bullet. And hopefully, you know, with a 90 grain bullet, we go to something like, you know, well, CFE 223 or, you know, a slower powder where we can get more velocity. That could make for a, a really nice hunting setup. I mean, I have to assume with a 90 grain bullet, we could probably get in the 2800 range, something like that. Maybe more. I don't know. But 8208XBR definitely isn't going to be the powder to get us there. Kind of knew that going in, but just wanted a a powder that I really like, that I have a high confidence in, that I felt like would be able to shoot some good groups as long as the bullet and the gun, you know, seem to pair okay. And that seems to be the case. Couldn't be happier here with a couple of 0.6 something inch groups. All right, let me run down that brass and then we'll move on to the 100 grainer. Yep, and that brass all looks great as well, which I'd be shocked if it didn't at those velocities. Okay, moving right along. Next up is the 100 grain tipped Game King. We're sticking with 8208XBR and dropping our charge weights just a little bit. First up is 25.0 grains. See what happens. It won't be hard to find that piece of brass. I guess since it's right here, we can go ahead and look at it. Yeah, it looks great. Well, those kind of strung a little bit weird. And that broke our streak of nothing but sub-MOA groups today. That sucks, man. Poopy doopy. 1.10 inches. Average velocity, 24.68. Standard deviation, 10.0. Extreme spread, 26. This was probably a pretty dumb powder choice for this video, now that I really think about it. Because... Like, we're not going to be shooting these sorts of velocities. We're going to be shooting much higher velocities in, in a hunting application, right? If we're trying to work up a hunting load. I don't know. We'll see how this next group shoots, but I'm left wondering. It's like, okay, they shoot crappy at this velocity, but if we load them up, would it tighten up? You never know. At least at least the 90 grainer shot really well. There's always that. Which, to be honest, we're probably going to end up using the 90 grainers anyway, just for that additional velocity that we can get with the lighter bullet, so. Hmm. Okay, one more group to go. This is still the 100 grain Sierra Game Changer. And this is 25.5 grains of 8208XBR. Half grain more than the last load. Hopefully this group tightens up. Gross. Gross, gross, gross. 1.23 inches. Even worse than the last one. Average velocity 2503. 5.8 standard deviation. Extreme spread of 15. Now it's important. 
that we not let this disappointing finish with the 100 grain game changer distract us from the fact that the 108 ELD match shot freaking amazing. The 90 grain game changer shot freaking amazing. And we've got a whole lot to be really, really happy about right now. So extremely successful range trip. All right, let's get back to the bench. Okay, let's have a quick look at the brass. And the last four rows are the ones we shot with 8208 XBR. I've looked at them really closely. There's nothing at all to see there. So the 8208 XBR brass is fine. Nothing really going on there. Now, if you'll remember, the last row I had stolen from our once fired box. So I'm going to move those over right now before I forget. Or I guess that would be twice fired. So this is my cider box. Plus it's got those. These have not been trimmed. They've never been annealed. But now these have been fired three times and they've been annealed once before this last loading. So I'll probably be annealing them every, every firing now. And we'll just see what sort of brass life we get. Let me see if I can find some on here that are particularly interesting. So I pulled out three from, this is our max charge with CFE 223. So 30.0 grains. Here's one of the worst. We've got a little bit of an ejector swipe. Yeah, right there at the top. Little circular spot with a little bit of smearing. And then on the other side, you might see kind of a straightish line from our extractor. There's no uh, like bending of the rim that I can see or anything like that or anything else going on anywhere. So this is not bad at all. Like I'd mentioned, no burrs raised up, no nothing. Just the tiniest little bit of smearing and a little bit of shininess here and there. Our primer looks good, nice rounded edges. So nothing I'm particularly freaked out about. These other two we're similar to that one. Let me see if I can orient the ejector spots at the top. Yep, so that's not too bad. And that's the worst of it at 30 grains of CFE 223. Pretty happy with that. So I'm very happy with the results of this video. We shot a bunch of great groups and that's really like, that's kind of what's most important to me right now. We're only a couple hundred rounds into this gun. And at this point, I already have like total confidence in our Odinworks barrel. You know, the ability for it to shoot a group. It's shooting good groups with multiple bullets. It's shooting good groups across a wide range of bullet weights, a wide range of velocities. So if nothing else, that's really what these first two videos have given me. Like the gun's running well, it's functioning well, it's shooting pretty decent with just about everything we're throwing at it. So I think now it's probably time to maybe get serious about something. And I think that might be this 90 grain Sierra Game Changer. I'm doing another project at the same time. And that is, I'm, I wanna work up a deer load for my 6.5 Grendel. And I'm gonna hunt with it this year. But I'm thinking I might just go ahead and try and work one up here reasonably quick. I've got like three weeks before our season opens. So let's see where we can get with this 90 grain Game Changer by then. Maybe I can shoot a deer with this gun this year. Here in Kentucky, we're allowed four deer. And I definitely want to get at least two just to have the meat in the freezer. So maybe we can spread the love and hunt with both guns. But where we need to get to is a lot more velocity. We were at around 2,550 feet per second with the 90 grain uh, game changer and 8208 XBR. And I'm thinking we should be able to get much, much better numbers than that with a smart powder selection. So I kind of pulled out a variety of powders that I'm thinking might really get that velocity up. You know, we've got load data, of course, for CFE 223 that we've been shooting with the 108 grain ELD match. There's also Hornady Lever Evolution. So CFE 223 and Lever Evolution are really close to one another, at least in the 6.5 Grendel. The load data is nearly interchangeable. And with our load data here with the 6 arc, the numbers are really close. So we might end up trying Lever Evolution, but I'd really have to like to have something that's a little less sensitive to temperature. And I can't help but wonder whether uh, Stayball 6.5, Winchester Stayball 6.5, whether it might be a decent choice. Like it's, it's a good bit slower burning than even CFE 223 and level, Lever Evolution, but I'm thinking we might be able to just cram enough of it into the case to get up to the, some pretty impressive velocities. Maybe not, we might run out of case capacity. So, you know, with the slower options, that's kind of the, the deal. Like we might just not have the case capacity and I really don't want to run like super compressed loads or something for a hunting load. I don't mind, you know, going compressed a little bit, but nothing ridiculous. 
couple more here up on the top, H4350, Reloader 16, and IMR 4451. In the comment section of our last video, Jim, who's always good for some excellent advice, mentioned that he was having good luck with those powders with heavy bullets in six arc. So it might not be ideal for this, for this 90, you know, which is on the lighter side a little bit, but it might be worth trying it. You know, maybe the next video, we just explore some of these different powders and see if any of them are able to get us velocities. And another one, Vitivori N540. That powder, it's one of the Vitivori high energy powders. Yeah, they're 500 series or high energy. Man, this thing, it packs a lot of punch per grain. Plus it is a very fine cut extruded powder. You can really get quite a bit of it into a, into a case. So I have no doubt we've probably got plenty of case capacity to work with N540. So we might go with that. I would also say this is the most likely to get us into pressure problems. <laughs> so we're going to have to maybe be a little bit careful with that guy. But that, you know, that's kind of what I'm thinking for the next video. Let's start narrowing down a hunting load and let's kill us a deer here in a few weeks with the six arc. So I think that's where we'll end this one, folks. Thanks for joining me and I'll see you next time.